It's been a little while since I did just a straight review of an electronic product, but here we are, I've bought the Ocarina player. This is not a sponsored review, they're not paying me to say any of this, and all of the opinions and observations that I make in this video are entirely my own. So this is basically an MP3 player, and it's designed for children. We'll open out and have a look in just a moment, but uh, the box is actually really nice. Really nice sort of shiny design on that. I don't suppose it really matters all that much. Uh, it's got, well, let's have a look. It's got an audio jack, it's got a LiPo battery, and it's got eight gigs of memory integrated. So, just open the security seals and take a look. And there it is, the Ocarina plan. And what else have we got in the box? We've got a quick start guide, and we've got a welcome and register your purchase card. Quick start guide is gonna be fairly simple because the thing only has four buttons on it. Anything else in the box? There is a USB cable and it is USB micro. Good, okay, well, here's the player. It's made of that plastic that's got a slightly soft and almost rubbery feel to it, which in my experience sometimes wears off, but anyway. Right, let's have a look. It's got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the left hand side, USB micro on the right, and that's it. There are six Torx screws, Torx security screws by the look of it, they've got a little nub in the middle on the back, and four buttons on the front. There's some very faint embossed writing on here which says, oh, which says basically the same as what it says on the back of the box. Contains USB cable, keep out of the reach of children. Now, I assume they're talking about keep the cable out of the reach of children because the player itself is designed for children. Warning, this device is not a toy. Considering that this is designed for and marketed for children, I'm a little bit surprised at the number of disclaimers there are saying, don't, <laughs> don't give it to children. Yeah, it's not a toy. Anyway. Well, there is no actual, there doesn't appear to be any rating for minimum age. And I bought this mainly to entertain my grandson who's nine months old because he really likes the ringtones on my phone but I can't give my phone to him or else he just stick it in his mouth and dribble all over it. So I bought this as a kind of slightly safer alternative. I'm not intending to give this to him and leave him unattended with it uh, but I thought that something like this is probably a bit safer if he does get hold of it and sticks it in his mouth he's not going to destroy it immediately. Anyway I think we should probably power it up you might need a charge first. I'll plug it in and charge it for an hour or two. For you, of course, that will be but a moment. So just plugging this into charge, and I've definitely got this the right way round, but this is one of these moments where it really feels like I'm applying too much force to this connector. That did not go in as easily as it feels like it should. And also nothing's happened. There's no indication that it is charging. Anyway, I'll leave it for three hours, which is the recommendation. We'll see what happens. Having had the chance to play with this a little bit now, it's charged up. It took about a couple of hours. It makes a weird quacking noise when you switch it on, but that's configurable. There's a startup sound MP3 in the top level of the storage, which you can change, I presume, and it'll make a different sound on startup. The screen's a nice little dot matrix screen, and so quite a nice appearance to it, even though it's quite small. It's backlit with a blue LED, which goes off after about 10 seconds and the device itself goes off after about a minute if it's unused and untouched. There is no off switch actually, in fact the only way to turn it off is just to stop it playing and leave it. They've managed to cram a surprisingly large number of functions into four buttons by means of long press, combination presses and so on. I'm not going to go through all of that now, but it does a surprising number of things. So that's pressing long press on both of those buttons goes into the menu. So there's a audio limiter which we can turn on or off. The audio is limited to quite a low level as standard. They've made it so that basically even if you hold that against your ear, it won't actually hurt you. We should probably play something then, shouldn't we? Needless to say, that's not in the English language. It comes with quite a collection of audio files on it, some of which are stories and some of which are songs. Some of them are English and some of them are Italian and other languages. There's actually German and so on. Of course you can change all of that. We'll have a look at the folder structure in a minute. But it does actually come with some usable audio straight out of the box, which is quite a nice idea, really. 
basically if you bought this and it had a full charge which mine didn't but I don't know maybe you could charge it in the car you could use that almost straight away without returning home also it records for a device like this it records audio there's a tiny little microphone hole there I don't know if you can see that and you can record audio on here and it will play them back I accidentally recorded five things while I was navigating the menus so there is also a button lock function so if you long press on this thing here on the middle button it locks the buttons and now nothing will respond which is quite good I suppose if you're giving it to a young child and you've already started the audio playing which we'll just do now fairy tales India dog elephant which is just the file name and play and now lock the screen So none of these buttons will do anything now. Anyway, so that's the functions. There are, as I say, quite a lot of functions that are done with combinations of buttons, long presses versus short presses, and so on. Studio Shrimp here. I had to reshoot this bit because I realized I hadn't tested the audio properly, which is a bit of a gaff considering that's the main function of this device. Anyway, we'll turn it on. And I've put some music files on here that I can play without having to worry about copyright. So I've got a test folder I've put a couple of YouTube audio files on here let's give those a play now actually before I do I'm going to go into the menu because there's this audio limiter thing and when that's set to on weirdly now the audio limiter is actually off so I think this is turn on the unlimited audio or turn off the unlimited audio so it's a bit kind of back to front but now this is not volume limited let's give that a play Let's compare that with the audio limited then. So if I turn that to off, now the audio is limited, I think. But that's as loud as that goes. When it's got the audio limiter on there, it's actually quite quiet even on the loudest setting which is a good thing if you're going to give it to babies who might stick it right next to their head it's probably a good thing to have the audio limited like that with the audio limiter on now with the outdoor mode I think they call it we can turn it up although there's no indication of the volume level now it sounds pretty good it's nice and resonant there's a good range of frequencies even on this quite small single speaker it doesn't sound tinny when you max out the volume you do get a bit of clipping and distortion but actually it's surprisingly good even then I have also tried it with headphones I haven't got any way of recording that into the camera I'm afraid but it, on the headphones it's not the best most crisp audio I've ever heard it's not as good as when I listen to that file from my computer it's not as good as when I've listened to headphone audio on say an iPod just a little bit on the sort of soft and mushy side perhaps but not in a way that detracts from it in any great way anyway back to the review when you plug it into the computer it just appears as external storage and there are a collection of folders there and it will navigate the folders so on the screen of the device the folder name is shown at the top in small letters and underneath the file name is shown in larger letters and that scrolls through when the song is playing it only supports one layer of folders you can't nest the folders well you can nest the folders but it won't recognize any nested folders so only a flat single layer of folders for organizing the music and audio it supports a range of audio formats mp3 wma og wave files aac m4a not flac 
So all in all, not a bad device. Quite happy that this was value for the money I paid. Now, pricing is a bit weird because the retail price of this product seems to be somewhere around the 85 to 90 pounds or 85 to 90 euros level. It looks like this is still in production, but I only paid about a quarter of that price for it and it's brand new. It's very widely available all over the place at about a quarter of the retail price. I'm not sure what's going on there. It's very strange. I'm not going to do a teardown of this for two reasons. One is I can't find the screwdriver that would fit that anyway. And also I want to use this. I don't want to take it apart and risk damaging it or having trouble putting it back together or voiding the warranty. It would be interesting to do that, but not today. So what's a little bit strange about this is that despite the fact this is a device that's designed and marketed for use by children. In fact, the website shows it being held by babies of a year or less. There we go, that's just gone off. There is no official formal rating for safety or suitability for an age range. I searched and searched and I couldn't find anywhere where they said this has been tested and approved for certain ranges of age. I don't know if that indicates that they've sought that kind of certification and failed to get it or whether they're still working on that. I don't know. So whilst this does actually seem to be quite a nice, safe and robust device, it really is quite solidly built and it's got this soft rubber, which apparently is food grade rubber. But anyway, in view of the fact that this is not formally rated for any particular age range, I'm gonna be a little bit cautious about how I use it. I'm going to make sure that I use this in a context where I can just steer it away from my grandson's mouth if it goes in there too much. I will just supervise the use a little bit, I think. For the most part, I wanted this as a music player that I could put down next to him when he's eating or when he's getting changed or something like that and he can be entertained by a little bit of music. And if he does grab it, he's not gonna break it immediately or get his fingers or dribble into the buttons or screen. My feeling is that this does actually probably fulfill that kind of rating, but since there is no formal safety testing published about it, I'm gonna be cautious because that's what I'm like. So that was my review of the Ocarina MP3 player for children. I think it's actually tremendous value at the price I paid. I think it's probably reasonable value at the full retail price. I think a lot of people are going to find the screen and buttons a bit awkward, but actually they've managed to cram quite a lot of functions in there and features for a rather simple interface. I think that's all right, and I'm happy with this purchase. If you've got any questions, do let me know in the comments. I will try to answer them. If there's any really common questions, I'll put them in a pinned comment, so check for that too. I hope this has been useful in some way. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.